Hey everyone, welcome to a mercy guide from a top 500 slash GM mercy. If you're new here, my name is Aquaboost. I am a GM slash top 500 mercy main. During season seven of Overwatch, I peaked 4,500 on one of my accounts and I had a total of three accounts that finished 4,400 plus SR. As of making this video, um, the most recent season that has ended is season 22, where I finished over 4,300 SR on three accounts playing only solo queue, no duo queue at all. Uh, I will be putting timestamps in the description if you'd like to skip to a certain section or come back to this guide and want to rewatch a certain part. Mercy settings and sensitivity. A higher sense makes it easier to scan around more and switch between targets if you're able to get used to it. Uh, my sensitivity is 10.5 in game and 800 DPI, um, but I also know mercies who have both higher and lower sensitivities than me, but most tend to have higher. As far as my crosshair goes, here is a screenshot of it. Um, I honestly think it's all personal preference. For my mercy specific settings, I have toggle beam connection on, guardian angel performance beam target off, toggle guardian angel off, guardian angel sensitivity set at 70, beam sensitivity set at 70. Again, this is all personal preference. I like toggle beam connection on just so that I don't have to hold down on my on my mouse whenever I want to heal. Guardian angel prefers beam target allows me to have more control from going from target to target. And um, toggle guardian angel having it off allows me to control how far of the distance I travel with my guardian angel. Um, these are the most popular settings that I see for other mercies as well. But as, again, it is all personal preference in my opinion. For guardian angel sensitivity, the lower the value of the sensitivity on these settings is the closer your mouse cursor has to be to the target in order to guardian angel or connect your beam to them. When to play Mercy and what are the best supports to play with her? Ana Mercy. Ana has a high healing output and can focus on healing high HP targets such as tanks, so Mercy can spend more time pocketing DPS characters. Obviously, if the Ana needs help, make sure that you help them out with your healing as well as damage boost in the front line if the tanks need it. Mora and Mercy. This has a super high healing output as well compared to Ana and Mercy. And sometimes damage boosting Coalescence is fun and can do a lot of damage. Bap and Mercy. This is one of my personal favorites. And an upside that a Bap and Mercy support comp compared to having an Ana or Moira is that if there is an enemy ult such as Genji Blade or Zarya Grav, the immortality field can help negate these ults if properly placed in time. If you are a Gravitond with an Ana slash Moira as your other healer, there is not much that you can do to help keep your team alive. Bap's healing output and immortality field can make a great pick with Mercy. You should also pick Mercy whenever your team is running heroes such as Ash, Hanzo, and Farah. If your team is running heroes such as Doomfist and Genji, it's usually harder to play Mercy as trying to follow them around is a lot harder with GA cooldowns as well as making you an easy target to get picked off if you're being aggressive. General Mercy Tips Damage Boost Low elo players tend to not use damage boost as much as they should. You should never be healing a full health target. Make sure to remember to switch to damage boost. People also forget to damage boost off meta heroes such as Symmetra and Junkrat. When you think of damage boost targets, heroes such as Ash Ash, Hanzo, Kree, Soldier, Farah come to mind. But a high energy Symmetra with damage boost can melt enemies. Damage boosting a Junkrat can help his mines deplete shields as well. Other good damage boost examples are high energy Zarya's, an ulting Roadhog, or a Ryan that is swinging his hammer into the enemy team during a fight or during a Zarya ult. Sometimes, it's worth damage boosting even when the target is in full health, especially if they're a high health tank. Utilizing damage boost to clean up a couple of last kills will be more worth in the building your ult chart, but make sure to heal them after. Do you damage boost a Farah during ult? This is a more specific question, but it's one that I've been asked from time to time again. If a Farah is in the front line of the fight and the enemy team is looking up at her when she's getting ready to ult, I do not damage boost in a heal because I know the enemy is expecting her to ult and will do everything in their power to kill her. If I am flanking behind the enemy team with Farah and the enemy team has not noticed that we are behind, I will damage boost the Farah's ult till I see the enemy start to attack her. Then I will switch to healing. In most cases though, if a Farah flank attacks a team with her ultimate, there's enough time for her to kill the enemy team with damage boost before they're able to target her. Using Valkyrie. I use Valk whenever we engage as a team or the enemy team engages into us. There's not much more to it in my playstyle. I also tend to use Valk whenever my Genji uses his blade so I can easily pocket him as he dashes all around. If a team fight has finished and all of the enemies are dead, do not heal your teammates and use damage boost until Valk is over. If you heal while you are in Valkyrie when it's not needed, you're wasting a tons of valuable ult charge that you can use later on. Sometimes I could build up to 40% of my new ult if I stop healing at the end of Valk and have it up already for the new fight. Also, do not heal your teammates if you already have ult and your other healer doesn't, so that they can build their ult. The value of your ult. This is a more specific tip. It will not apply to every situation. Nanoblade is currently the meta as of season 23, so the Ana Mercy support comp is what I run into more. If you have a Genji on your team that is close to Blade or already has it, and your team's Ana still needs to build Nano, let her heal and build her ult. The value of the Nanoblade combo will almost always outweigh the impact of your Valk. 
Again, this is something specific to the current meta and will not always occur every game, but I thought I could add it in here. If your team is running an Ana, Moira, or Bap, prioritizing your heals on your DPS is a better option if you're able to rely on your other support to heal the tank. If you are in a position where there's a lot of damage being done, I tend to heal DPS to have ult or are closer to their ult if the other DPS is not close to building theirs. I would rather keep a DPS who is alive with ult rather than one who is not close to ult, as they have a better chance of carrying the fight. Positioning, game sense, and knowing your surroundings. One of the biggest differences that I have seen from comparing lower ranked mercies to higher ranked mercies is their game sense and positioning. As mercy, it is super important to use your surroundings areas, such as walls, patches on the map, and shields to hide behind while healing slash damage boosting your teammates to avoid being in the line of sight of enemies. That being said, since you are in the back, Backline most of the time hiding, scanning the area behind you every couple seconds can be very helpful in making sure there are no flanking enemies looking to pick you or your other squishy teammates in the backline. Scanning the area every couple of seconds for enemy flankers and communicating this information to your team can be very helpful in making sure your teammates can help you if you're in trouble. Battle Mercy. When to do it and not when to do it. Being a Battle Mercy during ult can be one of the most fun parts of Mercy's kit as you're able to fly around into the enemies and pick off targets such as snipers. I am guilty of doing a lot of battle mercying myself, as I tend to get a lot of kills and it can make playing mercy a lot more exciting. But whenever someone asks me how to climb as mercy and asks about battle mercying, I heavily advise them against doing it. Many people ask why, and the response I get is usually, oh, but I was able to pick off X enemy or Y enemy in their backline. The main reason why I advise against it is that in the time that it takes for you to take out your pistol as mercy and find your way into the backline to get a kill, your team will be down a healer and the enemy team Team can kill multiple teammates and win a team fight, even though you're able to pick up the enemy widow in the process. If it's towards the end of the team fight and it seems that your team has already done, then that would be a safer time to go ahead and seize the opportunity to get a pick off. But even then, it can sometimes blow up in your face. Here's an example where I was able to balance healing and battle mercy. Run me the fucking check. Super jump and super jump res. Believe it or not, I do not use Mercy super jump as much as people think I should. And let me explain why. As you climb higher into the ranks, the quality and skill of the DPS players also increase. More specifically, Widowmakers, Hanzos, Ashes, McCrees, and Soldiers tend to be higher skill level. When you use Super Jump, you are displacing yourself high in the air for all enemies to see, unless you are hiding behind a wall or some form of cover. If you make the mistake of using Super Jump while an enemy sniper or hit scan has line of sight of you, you will become an easy target to kill. And if you die, your team will be down a healer, which is a significant disadvantage. If the enemy team is running a dive composition, such as Winston, D.Va, Genji, Doomfist, Tracer, Lucio, etc., I tend to use Super Jump a ton right when they are using their diving abilities, and it saves me from dying a lot. I highly recommend learning to use it in dive situations, and getting the timing down to use your Super Jump right when they start diving. If you use Super Jump before they dive, enemies can predict it and bait you out. Super Jump res. Doing the Super Jump res can be very useful, but again, I usually don't go for it whenever the enemy team has a sniper, but I do use it sometimes. It's honestly really cool to get off, and could make or break you completing a res. But usually, if the res is risky in the first place, there's a high possibility that you will super jump too high, or you will immediately die right after resing. I tend to use super jump res as a last second attempt if the round is about to be over, or if the target is the hero with a really good ult ability. For example, Zarya that has their grab up, Genji that has their blade, or Orion that has their shatter. And even then, sometimes I mess it up and cancel the res because I super jump too high. Here's how to super jump if you don't know how to. In order to super jump, you need to use your crouch and guardian angel ability at the same time. My crouch ability is left control on my keyboard and the shift button for my guardian angel. You use both at the same time and at the very end as you approach the target, you press space. Again, you use your crouch and your GA at the same time and when you get close to them, you press space or your jump ability. In order to do the super jump res, you do the same thing as a regular super jump, but you use res right before you jump. For example, right beside you. Continues. And this is what happens when you super jump too high, you will break your res. It takes a lot of time to get used to, and I don't recommend doing it unless you can perfect it down in something such as practice range, but it can't be useful in some situations. 
If you enjoyed this video, it would mean a ton to me if you could leave a like and subscribe if you're interested in watching more of my content. I upload Overwatch content about four times a week, and I also stream over at twitch.tv slash aquaboostdaily. The link to my stream will be in the description down below. If you have any specific questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. I will try my best to answer as many as I can. You can also follow me on Twitter at aqua underscore boost, where you can ask me questions on there as well. The links to my Twitter and all other social media that I have will be in the description. Again, thank you for watching my Mercy Guide, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Yeah.